Say, Amos, this seems like Sunday. Yeah, well, it is Sunday. You see, Andy, we is on the radio now every Sunday on CBS for Rinso. That's right. Rinso, the new Rinso with Solium, brings you the Amos and Andy Show. Yes, sir, Rinso, the soap that contains solium, the sunlight ingredient, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Ernestine Wade, the Jubilaires, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. And now, Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to run back the calendar 22 years to the year 1926, when George Kingfish Stevens was an ambitious young man courting his girl, Sapphire Smith. We find them with their heads close together, sitting at their favorite soda fountain. George, it certainly is nice to be sitting here having sodas together. Yes, I've enjoyed it a lot, too, darling. And the next time is going to be my treat. <laughs> uh, uh, honey, dear, getting back to the near future, is you ask your mom and papa about us getting married? Well, yes, George. And to be frank with you, um, your financial situation worries them. Well, now, listen, Sapphire, if your folks is worried about my income, believe me, they is worrying over nothing. What you mean? <laughs> well, uh, I got along all right so far, you know. Mm-hmm. And when uh, we is married, I'll just borrow twice as much, that's all, honey. <laughs> well, George, you know, it costs us money to support a wife these days. I know you won't believe it, but steak has gone up to 28 cents a pound. <laughs> Holy smokes, 28 cents a pound. Well, I know one thing. Prices can't go no higher. Uh, well, we just got to keep cool with Coolidge here. That's all we can do. But, George, when is you going to get a job? Well, you see, Sapphire, my darling, it's uh, going to take a little time. A little time? Uh, yeah, a little time to find out what I best fitted for, you see. And so they were married. And now, 22 years later, we look in on the kingfish and his wife, Sapphire. There you go again, Sapphire, nagging to me about getting a job. I done told you it's going to take a little time to find out what I suited for. You've been saying that for 22 years, but you ain't never done nothing about it. Yeah, well, you know, picking the right business ain't easy. After all, I don't want to get to be a big success in something only to find out later that I ain't fitted for it, you know. I... Well, it's high time that you fitted yourself for some job. Honey, look here. I is handicapped. That's why I can't get a job. I just ain't got the education. Education? If I had education, I could go to work. Now, don't tell me that you're dumb, George Stevens. I can prove it to you. I married you, didn't I? <laughs> so that's the story, Henry. I just told Sapphire I couldn't get a job and make money because I didn't have no education. Well, you know, that's a coincidence. Uh, Andy was talking about fitting his self for some kind of work by taking a course at some kind of school. Hmm. Possibly a correspondence school or some big state universal. <laughs> I think that he's trying to find the right school. The right school. Uh, Andy wants a, a correspondence mm -hmm. for, uh... Say, maybe I could dig up a school for him. Uh, Henry, I think I'm going to be able to take my wife home some money. Yes, well, you're all set, Kingfish. I got to go home, too. You know, my wife and me had a little tiff today. Oh, what's the matter? Well, my wife wanted me to take the laundry to one of these self-surface automatic places. Can you imagine a wife asking a husband to do an embarrassing thing like that? I put my foot down. I positively refused. And you didn't take the washing down there? I should say not. I'd done it at home. <laughs> Well, I got to make Andy think that I was an agent for a high-class correspondence school. Uh, let me see. Wait a minute. Here he comes now. I'll get on the phone. Well, hiya, Kingfish. Hiya. Say, what's that sign over your door to say, uh, Worldwide A1 Correspondence School? Uh, be with you in just a minute, Andy. I got to make a report and call to President Eisenhower at Columbia University. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, hello, operator. Uh, give me alma mater 3642, will you please? You calling Eisenhower? Uh, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, hello, Columbia. 
I'd like to speak to General Eisen. Uh, oh, this you, General? They got you on the switchboard today, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, General, this is George Stevens of Worldwide. Oh, that's fine, thanks. What's new with you? Oh, you got a third biography coming out, huh? Your butler wrote this one, huh? <laughs> uh, well, General, I just called to say hello. Natural, all of us at Worldwide Correspondent takes interest in our former students like you. Uh, what's that? Oh, I wouldn't feel too bad about not going for that other deal. At least you wound up being president of something. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, so long. Or oh, as we say up at Yale, bar bar and a happy whiffing poof to you. Uh, hey, King, kids, uh, excuse me for eavesdropping on your conversation there. But I never know that General Eisenhower went to correspondence school. Oh, he was one of our best students, and he? he went to our school for a curriculum and a half. <laughs> Well, you know, Kingfish, uh, I might be interested in going to this school. Uh, do you think I could get in? Well, uh, of course, you'd have to take the required entrance exam, man. Uh, uh, is that very tough, Kingfish? Well, now, that depends. Uh, has you ever had your IQ took? No, but somebody got my watch down at the pool hall last week. <laughs> and, uh, and the IQ, uh, that's to see how smart you is. Uh, tell me this, when you went to grade school, how far did you go? About three miles. I took a shortcut to a college. <laughs> oh, no, and uh, I mean... Uh, uh, look, uh, 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 how long did you go to school? Oh, oh, well, I have members. I spent two terms in the second grade. Two terms? Yeah, Wilson's and Coolidge's. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's what I wanted to know now, and, uh, now tell you what, I'll give you an IQ, or what we call the entrance exam for the correspondence school. Yeah. All right, question number one. Here we go, you ready? Yeah. Uh, what is your name? Andy Brown. Correct. Uh, second question. Uh, what is your address? Uh, no cheating now. Come on, uh. yeah. Simpson's Boarding House on 134th Street. Mm, right again. Say, your IQ is higher than I thought it was. Uh, now the next question, Andy, is about history. Uh, who was the man that chopped down the cherry tree, never told a lie, was the first president of uh, the country, and uh, had the city of uh, Washington, D.C. named after him? Uh, that's a tough one. Let me consecrate on that. <laughs> hey, I'll give you a little hint. Uh, Georgie... You cross the Delaware, oh Georgie, I seem to. Work. I got it, I got it, Nelson Eddy. Uh, no. <laughs> well, Andy, look, uh, you didn't do so good on that last one, but that stumped a lot of the best ones. Uh, but wait a minute, uh, you got an average here of eighty-five. Yeah. You was ready to matriculate into our uh, worldwide A one correspondence school. Well, that's good. Listen, uh, what courses has you got, Kingfish? Well, let's take a look at the menu here. Uh, we got. Uh, oh, here's a. Uh, we got drafting, uh, electrical engineering. Yeah, tell me this. They got good teachers for them things? Well, the electrical engineering course is being written by Thomas Edison himself. We got, uh... Well, how about the course on drafting? Uh, General Hershey for that, or we got good men. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, I kind of like that electrical engineering course. Well, the electrical engineering is a good one, Andy. And you ought to do all right if you'll just keep your head up against the grindstone, light up the midnight oil, and burn the candle at both ends and all that stuff. Yeah. You might even end up with honors. And granulate uh, from the electrical course, uh... Master, come louder. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we have reduced the price to $50 in cash. Okay, okay, Kingfish. Here, here's the $50. When do I get my first lesson? Uh, the first lesson, I'll uh, air mail it to you tomorrow. Well, let's work together now. Me and you and the uh, worldwide school. Right. W wait a minute, though. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's three of us. That's unlucky. No, no, Andy. Three ain't unlucky. Don't you remember that old story? There was three children in the land of Babylon. And Rack, Meshach, Abednego. Three children from the land of Israel. Shack, Rack, Meshach, Abednego. They took a little trip to the land of Babylon. Shack, Rack, Meshach, Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. Shack, Rack, Meshach, Abednego. He took a heap of gold and he made him an idol. Shack, Rack, Meshach, Abednego. Everybody when you hear the music of the cornet. Oh, yeah. And you told everybody when you hear the music of the flute. And you told everybody when you hear the music of the horn. Oh, good Lord, said you got to bow down and worship the idol. Shack, rack, bake, shack, bend, they go. 
But the children of Israel would not bow down. You couldn't fool them with a golden idol. So the king put the children in the fiery furnace. And he heaped on coal and red hot brimstone. He made it seven times hotter than it ought to be. Shadrach, Shadrach, burn up the soldiers the king had put there. Shadrach, 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 Oh, Shadrach, Then the Lord called Gabriel and gave him a couple of wings. Well, he came on down into the middle of the furnace, began to cool the flames. Them children got so happy, they went strutting right through the fire. Just laughing and talking about the power of the gospel. Then old Nebuchadnezzar said, Here now, he saw the power of the Lord. And they had a big time in the land of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. Hello there, this is John Lake. You know, while I've been sitting here waiting until it's time for me to say a few words about New Rinso, I've been thinking, no matter what I say about the amazing new brilliance of a Rinso wash, no matter how persuasively I tell you how New Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash, you'll never really appreciate Rinso until you've used Rinso yourself. What happens in a Rinso wash is almost unbelievable. White clothes turn out not just whiter, but whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but brighter than brand new. Now, that's a very astonishing thing to see happen. And it's possible because New Rinso contains a new ingredient. The scientific sunlight ingredient, solium. Rinso with solium is so wonderful it can do this. Even clothes that are dried indoors look as though they've been blowing in the warm summer sun. It's sunshine in your wash. I think you'd better try safe new Rinso yourself. Only new Rinso contains solium. Listen, Amos, when I find that kingfish, I'm going to have a showdown with him. Uh, yeah, well, uh, tell me this, Andy, uh... Uh, what is the matter? Uh, what is you mad about? I ain't never seen you like this. Well, I'll tell you. A week ago, I joined a correspondence school, and I ain't got my first lesson yet. You joined a correspondence school? You mean you're taking a course there, huh? Yeah, that's right. You know anything about the school? Well, a little. Only thing is, they ain't got no electricity in the place. They're using candles, burning oil, and everything else. Yeah, well, I, I uh, don't get that. Well, I'll still do all right there. Don't worry. Kingfish told me I'm liable to trickle out of the thing Mazda come loudmouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me this, Andy. What has the kingfish got to do with all this? Well, I give him $50 for the course. He's selling them for the worldwide school. And you say you ain't got no lessons yet, huh? No. Yeah, it certainly look, uh, look like to me that maybe that kingfish is pulling a fast one on you again, son. Say, I wonder if he has done pull something on me. Hey, well, what can you do? I'll find out. I'll call up Thomas Edison. Hi, Shorty. Did you see it, Andrew? Uh, he, he was in here, in here about 30 minutes. He, he, he came in to get a haircut and a shave. He, he stopped by just to see it. I, 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 I ain't seen him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. But Amos told me that Andy was mad with you for jipping him with that correspondence school. Yeah, well, I sold Andy a course and charged him $50 uh, in tuition. Uh. Mm, well, he, he, even if you cheated him, it was certainly cheap enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 school is a wonderful thing, Shorty. Yeah, you know, Ken, Fish, yeah, speaking of school, I had a date with a beautiful college girl last night. She invited me up to her house to play checkers. Play checkers, huh? Yeah, we, we were sitting there with only that little checkerboard between us. Mm -hmm. And at 12 o'clock midnight, she, lo she looked me in the eyes, smiled, and turned out the light. 
But I turned it right back on. I, I, I got wise to her. What do you mean you got wise to her? She was trying to cheat at checkers. <laughs> You know, Shorty, conferential, I gotta find some way to get from under this electrical engineering course that I didn't promise Andy. Yeah, I got from what Amos say. Andy's pretty mad at you because he ain't got no lessons yet from your school. You, you better be prepared because he, he's looking for you. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to tell him something. Uh, what excuse could I have for not sending him to electrical engineering lessons? Um, hey, wait a minute, I got it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell him the school is on vacation. That ought to do it. Yeah, say. Speaking of engineering, you know, Kingfish, when I was a boy, I, 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 I was a mechanical wizard. Oh, there, there was nothing I couldn't do mechanical. Oh, is that so? Oh, yeah. And my, 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 my father, he recognized my talents. He, so one Christmas, he gave me an erector set to practice on. Uh, erector set, huh? Oh, yeah. It, it came in a nice big wooden box. My, my father told me someday I, I, t- I turned out to be a great engineer, and I, I would have been too if it hadn't been for one thing. Uh, what was that? Well, the mechanical connections, of, of, uh, uh, the, the, equi- uh, the equipment didn't, uh, uh, the, the measurements of the different, uh, 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 I couldn't get the box open. <laughs> Well, look who's here, Student Brown. Uh, uh, how's everything at the alma mater? Wait till I lock this door. <laughs> I want to have a talk with you. Uh, wait a minute, what you locking the door about? Kingfish, I'm going to beat you to pieces. I'm going to punch you right in the nose. Now, wait a minute, Andy. You wouldn't hit a man with glasses, would you? You ain't got glasses well, on. Well, I just ordered them today. I'm getting them tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, 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 what is bothering you, my, my student friend? Kingfish, I've been sitting home with my pencil and my IQ all sharpened up, and I ain't got no lessons. <laughs> Yeah, well, Andy, naturally, uh, we ain't mailed out no lessons yet, and there's a good reason for it. What do you mean? Well, Andy, you signed up for the course here on November the 3rd. Right. Well, November the 1st or the 4th, the following day, was the first day of the Christmas vacation. Mm. Ain't that kind of early for Christmas holidays, Kingfish? Oh, not at all, Andy. The Christmas holiday starts right after the end of our first school siesta. <laughs> Too bad you didn't join the school a day earlier, Andy. You missed all the carol singing. It was beautiful. <laughs> the commencement. We was the commencement of the ending there. Yeah. Well, I guess I starts getting the lessons right after Christmas then, huh? Oh, no, Andy. Uh, then we got some more holidays coming up. There's New Year's, Washington's birthday, Lincoln's birthday, the January White Sales, and National Donut Week. <laughs> we can't mail you no lessons with all that stuff going on, you know. Well, look here, Kingfish. I was counting on studying all year round. How come the school's closed down for so many holidays? Well, to protect the students, Andy. Science has is, is, uh, done uh, discovered that the brain can only hold so much knowledge. Mm-hmm. After that, it gets overcrowded. Yeah, well, how come they come to that confusion? Well, uh, by the big experiment, Andy, they took an X-ray picture of Professor Einstein's head. They wanted to see if too much learning would hurt the brain. Yeah, well, how'd the picture come out? Well, I happened to be down in the drugstore when the snapshot came back. Uh, uh, the inside, the inside of his head was really crowded. Looked like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Andy. Yeah, his Ukrainian must have been jammed full of learning, all right. Oh yeah, it couldn't hold no more. Uh, the doctor say if Einstein had to put one more fact in his brain of his, the whole mess would have slopped over into his antrum. That's what he said. <laughs> I guess he got to be pretty careful, all right. Oh, yeah. If he learned, uh, uh, learns himself any more of them theories, he's going to have to put a corset on his head to keep it from uh, popping. That's what he's <laughs> Well, anyway, Andy, I guess you understand now why we had such a long vacation and might not get the lesson until next April and May, you see. Yeah, well, look, Kingfish, you know this worldwide correspondence school sounds all right, but I believe I'll change my mind and get out of it. Give me my $50 back, will you? Why, Andy, that $50 has already been sent to headquarters. Wait a minute, you. Now listen, Kingfish. I'm going to give you till 12 o'clock tomorrow to give me that $50. If you don't, I'm going to drag you into court and sue you. Drag me into court? Yes, sir. Uh, you're going to sue me? Uh, Andy, look here. I got a great idea for you. Why don't you take our, our school's law course for $80, and in four years you'll be able to handle your own kids? Why don't you do that? <laughs> You know, it doesn't take long for good news to get around. And the big news about new Rinso is spreading like wildfire. New Rinso with sodium actually gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. 
And if that isn't an amazing fact, I don't know what is. Think of it. You tumble your wash into a tub of soapy rich rinse suds. And you're sure to get a wash not just whiter, but whiter and brighter than brand new. With a new wonderful brilliance you've never seen before new Rinso. And the Rinso you get today at the store contains a, a, the astonishing sunlight ingredient, solium. It's such a new idea in washing clothes that you'll see this happen. You can dry your wash indoors on a rainy day. And Rinso with solium puts sunshine in your wash. New Rinso is safe for clothes and so kind to hands. Try Rinso next wash day. Only new Rinso contains solium. Come in, Stonewall. I was over at your office looking for you. Yeah, well, I, I didn't go in today, Kingfish. I was up late last night. I thought a funny thing happened to me. Too. Mm, what was that? Well, I was listening to the police calls on the short wave, and suddenly I hear them say, be on the lookout for Joe Benson. See, he wanted by the police $500 reward for information leading to his arrest. Mm-hmm. So I, I realized that they were talking about a dear friend of mine. Yeah, well, uh, what did you do, Stonewall? I rushed right to a telephone. I called him. I said, Joe, something is happening, and I is your friend. Meet me at my office at midnight. Oh, that's true friendship, all right. What happened? I was waiting there with two policemen. That double-crosser never showed up. Oh. <laughs> See, uh, uh, you know, uh, our lives will get turned into Stonewall. I was in trouble... Uh, and I got to do something fast. Well, what, what, what is the facts, Kingfish? Well, I done started a correspondence school, and I got Andy to sign up for the course of $50. Now, he's so about the thing and wants his money back. I don't want to give it to him, though you know me. Well, this is easy. Just tell him the school went bankrupt, and there ain't no money left. Say, hey, that's right. Bankrupt. Say, I think I can get him to fall for that. Hey, well, that wasn't a tough case for you, Stonewall. No, Kingfish. You know, speaking of bankruptcy... Five years ago, I went bankrupt myself. You did? My creditors dragged me into court to see if there was anything they could get out of me. Hmm, they did, huh? Yeah, but I proved to that judge that I didn't have no cash and no assets of no description. Mm. I proved that I was an honest businessman. I was just stripped clean. Yeah. I didn't have a worldly possession left. Boy, yeah. when that case was over, I was wore out. <laughs> I sure needed a rest. Yeah, well, what in the world did you do, Stonewall? I went for a cruise on my yacht. Oh. Look at that kingfish sleeping with his head on the desk. Kingfish, wake up. I want to talk to you. I ain't asleep, Brother Ender. I'm just sitting here at my desk grieving. I just heard some horrible news, Ender. What kind of horrible news? Andy, your old alma mater, the Worldwide A1 Correspondence School, has gone bankrupt. Holy smoke. You mean I lose my money? Yeah, well, you don't lose but $50. Think of our president of the school, Mr. Worldwide. He loses everything. Uh, well, what is he going to do about it? Well, Andy, when he realized that he was bankrupt, he done just about what you would expect any big man like that to do. What was that? Well, he was in his office at the time. He went over to the window, he looked down, and... Well, Andy, he dived out. Oh, me, that's awful. Was he killed? No, Andy, as lucky as office was on the ground floor, he just got a knot on the top of his head. That's all he got. <laughs> well, I demand that I see the president of this company. Well, too late, Andy. The last anybody see the Mr. Worldwide, he was staggering toward a plane for Mexico. Yeah, well, why did this Mr. Worldwide run away to Mexico now? Well, Andy, I was ashamed to tell you, but he's been dipping into the assets of the school. Oh, yeah. And when he got on the plane, uh, he was carrying a black bag. Police is trying to catch him now. In financial terms, Andy, it's the most peculiar situation you've ever happened. What do you mean? Well, the assets is frozen and Mr. Worldwide is hot. That, 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 that. <laughs> well, look here. What is the chances of getting him back here and bringing him to justice? Uh, not too good, Andy. I just hear that when he got below the border, he got himself a smart Mexican lawyer, took the thing to the Supreme Enchilada Court and had a writ of habeas <laughs> con con there and... Well, there ain't nothing we can do about it, that's all. Yeah, that's right. That Mexican law is pretty tricky, all right. Yeah, it's hot, too, down there, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, but the only thing I want to know is, how am I going to get my $50 out of this? Well, frankly, I don't know, Andy. 
I just been going over the ledger here now. The liabilities of the school amount to four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Four hundred and twenty five thousand. Yeah. What is the asset? Well, got it right here on my desk. Three pencils, an eraser, and a pair of application blanks entitled why you should go to worldwide school. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, Kingfish, I got enough of this kind of thing. I'm going to take this thing to court and sue somebody. Well, now, take it any easy here, Andy. Let's not get too sewer here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell you what I'll do. Uh, to satisfy the $50 debt, I'll give you the school, goodwill and all. Oh, you're going to give me the whole school, huh? Yeah. Well, now, that's better. I guess that's better than nothing, all right. Yeah, here, Andy, the school is yours. Yeah, take all these assets. Come on over here, sit in the chair. Yeah. Andy, you're now the president of the Worldwide A1 Correspondent School. Oh, boy, yeah. This feels pretty good, all right. Hey, just think, Andy, four days ago you started here as an ignorant, stupid scholar. Mm-hmm. Now you as president of the whole school. <laughs> you know, Andy, there certainly is a land of opportunity, Andy, boy. <laughs> Home. Oh, George, I'm so glad you're here. I called you at the lodge hall. Yeah, well, I ain't been hanging around there for the last couple of days. You see, I pulled a pretty good deal this week, honey, and I just kind of taking it easy, you know. <laughs> well, George, I got some good news for yeah, you. Yeah, what's that, honey? You remember I talk about the reason that you could never get a good job. Well, you ain't going to have that trouble no more, uh, What do you mean? I made arrangements to take care of your education. And it dropped in today, and I bought you a course for $75 in the Worldwide Correspondence. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, Andy, before we go, there's one thing we ought to do. Yeah, what's that? Well, we got to tell everybody that if they listen good to our announcer, Mr. Lake, and if they try Rinso with Solium, like he tells them to, they ain't going to regret it. Folks, when you go down to your store, be sure and get Rinso. Thank you, Amos. And remember, you needn't say Rinso with Solium, because all the Rinso you buy today contains Solium. New Rinso with Solium gets white clothes, not just whiter, but whiter than new, and washable colors... Brighter than brand new. Rinso is safe for clothes, so kind to hands. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very good clue for those of you who are interested in the CBS Saturday night program, Sing It Again. Here's a clue for the Phantom Voice and the big jackpot. He made a fortune in his time by signing on the dotted line. Here it is again, folks. He made a fortune in his time by signing on the dotted line. Good luck. And good night, folks. See you next Sunday. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company, the makers of New Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Until then, good night to all of you from all of us. Amazing? Yes, but doctors have proved it. Life Boy Health Soap and your daily bath gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Get Life Boy right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy Show at the same time next Sunday. Stay tuned now for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately over many of these stations. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System.